Well, it's starting to get hot this week, and this is the time of year when I get a lot of calls for people wanting me to come out and check their AC. Hey, can you come out and put a little Freon? My, my AC's not blowing cold enough. Usually what I find, and I do a lot of these systems, majority of the time it's a lack of airflow uh, going through the actual evaporator, getting into the cab. You know, we're not getting good uh, air out of the vents, and it's, you know, and everybody just seems to think they just need Freon. Well, I went ahead and put my gauges on there and I can tell just at the idle pressure that I've got plenty of pressure in there and, and, and the compressor actually does turn on when it needs to. Now the Bobcat AC system here on the M series, this happens to be on a uh, T650, this is like a 2016 model, but all the M series used this style uh, air conditioning. Now this isn't Bobcat air conditioning, this is MCC, Mobile Climate Control out of Canada. They make really good air conditioning systems, they hold up very well. But these things go through a lot of abuse as far as dirt and mud and everything that actually gets into the uh, AC system. So we got to make sure we keep all that clean. We got to keep the heater core clean, the evaporator core clean. We got to make sure that we change our filters on a regular basis or the evaporator can actually freeze up if it doesn't get good airflow. And we can't forget the most or one of the most important uh, filters behind the seat is the um, uh, recirculation filter. So to start, I guess, an AC tune-up, I call it, I'm going to start by removing the cab filters. And you can see they all have this little cover on the side, and this is the plenum. This is the intake into the AC system. So I'm going to pull the filter out on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my uh, cover to get access to the coils. Now on the bottom of this cover, you can see these little duck bill, uh, little drain valves. And see this one has a notch cut out of it. Usually they don't have a notch cut out of it. And what happens, see our water is supposed to drain through the holes here in the cover. If the water, if dirt gets down in this little duck bill, the water cannot drain out and it'll just cause mud to build up in here. And um, the water will actually build up in here and freeze inside our coils. So that's why these are cut out. You know, they're usually either cut like a V like that or cut at an angle so that water can drain out. That's probably one of the biggest problems with this system is that these get clogged up so easy. Now that we're inside, we can see our heater core is actually on the front and our, um, I'm sorry, our evaporator core is on the front and our heater core is in the center. Now, when I say this is an independent system, the AC does not talk to any of the Bobcat controllers. If something goes wrong with your AC, you're not gonna get any codes. The, the machine's not gonna tell you what the problem is. So right here, we got an ATM. This is an automatic thermostat module. This module is the brains of this AC system. This light right here is currently on. So I have the machine on and the AC switch turned on and this light is solid. That means everything's good. If this light is flashing, it gives you a flash code. And I think there's like three different sequences of flashing. It's like um, uh, temperature to the de-icer, um, open circuit to the AC compressor itself. Now, if you ever get that open circuit uh, to the compressor code. A lot of times it's actually in the switch in the cab, that little uh, lighted green switch that we turn on and off. If you've turned that on and your green light is real dim, we're probably not getting a good contact through that switch to actually turn on the compressor. That's probably the second biggest problem I see on these AC systems is the compressor doesn't turn on and just happens to be a bad switch in the cab. So it's just something to take note of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my air compressor and, and this one is fairly clean since, you know, water was able to drain out of this. It's not covered in mud. Sometimes I'll actually have to wash these out. But this one's relatively clean, so I'm going to go ahead and get my, my air compressor hooked up. And we're going to blow out all these coils. We're going to blow out our plenums. That's why we're going to leave our filters out. And we're going to blow out our plenums and just get this area good and clean.
So you can see how much dirt was inside there when we were uh, blowing all that out. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, covers put back on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and install the new fresh air uh, cab filters. Now you can see that all M series are gonna have the same hookup spot right here in this area is where we hook our gauges up. Um, they're all gonna be located right here in this area. Now this is my recirculation filter that is behind the seat. I've got the seat slid all the way forward so I can reach over the back to put this in. You can see it's got these three metal clips on here and this thing is a real pain to kind of pop out. So I just use a pry bar. We just put it back here in each corner, you know, on either side in the middle. And we're just gonna pop that filter right out. Yeah, that filter is absolutely disgusting. And a lot of people don't even know this filter's back here for some reason. And a lot of times what I see is clipboards or paperwork, uh, bottles, trash, everything blocking the flow of this recirculation filter. So it's important to keep behind the seat clean uh, if you're having AC issues or just general maintenance. Always make sure that this filter is clean and free of obstructions, no blocks in front of it. And to get the new one in, we just simply line it up and pop it into place so that's that's pretty much all we need to do for general maintenance is to clean those coils make sure our filters are clean you know blow out the plenums real good um, I know that my neutral pressure, my pressure with the machine off looks good, but we're still going to change the gauges after we get it started. But I kind of felt it before I started this job and yeah, it was blowing. It was kind of cold, but it was real low airflow and it was not as cold as it should be. So let's fire it up and see how it feels now. always forget that <laughs> when you do this job is when you see when you first turn the blower on a lot of dust does come out of those vents so i just got totally dusted out here ah. That's getting cold real quick. Yeah, so that feels a lot better. I got really strong airflow out of there and it's really cold too. Let's take a look at our gauges. Yeah, so based on our temperature, our outside ambient temperature, I mean, our gauges are dead on where they should be. So this does not need any Freon. You know, a lot of customers just say, hey, can you come out and put some Freon in there because it's not cold. And again, like I said, it's a lack of airflow on these machines.
So it's hard to go over every possible scenario why your air conditioner on your Bobcat won't work, but hopefully that gives you kind of a general idea of what to check for, you know, airflow, filters, cleaner coils. Um, I showed you where the thermostat is and the thermostat flash codes. You can find the flash codes at uh, mcc.com. It's uh, Mobile Climate Control out of Canada. They've got a lot of manuals on there and it's also in your service manual of your Bobcat uh, to find those flash codes and it'll tell you exactly what the problem is and kind of where to go. So if you have any questions on the air conditioning systems on your Bobcat, please let me know. But um, it's kind of hard to troubleshoot when you're not there and you don't have the right gauges and stuff. So but I'll do anything I can to help. Thanks for watching.